Kate, welcome to the Content 10X podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Now, I should say welcome back, actually, because we spoke back in 2018, which obviously was a long time ago yeah, and a lot has changed since then. <laughs> yeah, in, in the, in the um, social media and content world, that may be four years, but it's probably more like four decades, isn't it, really? So. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to describe it. So let's let's kick this conversation off with, um, bearing in mind it has been four years, um, in terms of Pinterest, so how are people using Pinterest today? Well, that's such a great question given, I, I was looking at that too, like 2018, it's so different. And you know, what's interesting is that users still use Pinterest the same way. So they still have the same search intent. They still have the same discovery intent and they're still not enamored by influencers, they're more consumed with themselves and the answering the questions that they have or searching for ideas than they are like Instagram or TikTok. So what's very fascinating is that Pinterest has still remained the outlier, if you will, amongst the social media channels. And I kind of appreciate that that culture has still remained true, that people find Pinterest this kind of solace and introverts platform. So that user habit hasn't changed. Now, there's a lot of other things and ways that they can interact with the platform, but their intent is still the same. Yeah, and it's very much a, a search intent. So if, if you're, you know, pushed to say search or social media, would you always say it's very much a search in engine discoverability, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We call it search and discovery. So it's yeah. always in that block of like Google and YouTube, never in the block of Instagram, Facebook meta or any of those. No, no. So in terms of businesses, so um, you know, I have a creative agency, you have a <clears throat> business, people listening in to this podcast are likely trying to understand how they can better market their businesses, reach their ideal clients and maximize content. So what kind of opportunities for businesses are there on Pinterest? Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for them to connect with their consumer about three to six months before they might take an action. So we think of Pinterest as this long-term marketing platform. So what you're doing with your content or as you try to reach your person and content is so important on Pinterest. We have found that over and over and over is that if people don't really have a good supportive like content net, they can't really get the people because what pinners want is like I said, they want answers to their questions. And so if businesses can think about what are the main questions that my end user has, or what are they searching? When are they searching for it? Especially if you have a seasonality component to your business, think about catching them back at that point, three to six months before they make a decision so that they can save your article, they can save your product or your idea so that when they're ready to take action, they take action on it. And I think that's really important for business owners to understand when they approach the platform to market, that it's not a it's not a feel good platform for marketing. There's no instant gratification. They're adding more elements to it, but for the most part, you're not going to get a like or a heart or a share. It's just going to feel like it's going nowhere for a while. But if you stay true to understanding who your person is and doing some searching on the platform of your keywords to see what's out there, that will set you up for success much more than anybody else who approaches it like an Instagram. Yeah. And I think, you know, that is just the whole fundamental like premise of content marketing overall, isn't it? It is a long game and content marketing is long game and you need to be patient. Now, in terms of businesses, um, I think I often think with Pinterest, it's really good for B2C companies and the D2C companies. But when it comes to B2B companies, are you seeing that winning on Pinterest? And what kind of business accounts in the B2B world do you, um, do you think are really doing it well? Yeah, that's a great question. And we definitely see the B2C getting a much more higher volume of traffic and engagement than the B2B. But what's interesting is that the B2B can still have a high conversion rate on a low amount of traffic, right? So we see coaches doing well. We see 
even businesses like myself that have an agency side to it with services, but we also have an education side where people are asking questions or they're maybe even come across our content and they didn't even know that it was possible to learn about Pinterest marketing. Mm -hmm. So you have to approach it a little bit with the education forward and then lead them down the path of potentially engaging your services. So we use Pinterest primarily as a funnel towards our education and it doesn't necessarily fuel our agency side, Mm -hmm. but it can potentially fuel somebody who's at the beginning of their business who would eventually utilize our agency services. But we do hear from a lot of people who do coaching, um, even in the business space, maybe somebody trying to start their business or become an entrepreneur or ways to make money from home. So we do see some of that, but if we got real deep into like the, the B2B spaces that were finance accounting, all we don't see that as strong over there too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, that completely makes sense. Um, but you do see that there is a big variety of the different types of businesses. And sometimes it does surprise me the content that you see and, and that people are really responding to it. Um, in terms of the platform itself. So it started off as a very much an image only platform, didn't it? And I was looking back to our conversation in 2018 and we, it was largely a discussion about the, the images, the visuals, the graphics, but now it's changed so much. We have video on there. And I, I wanted to ask you about that in terms of now, what are the different types of, of content that you can be putting onto Pinterest and how, I guess? Yeah, it's changed so much. And I think when we talked in 2018, we were having that kind of discussion about will video work on Pinterest because it feels so invasive, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a speed bump, but it did eventually start working, but only in short form. It was very much this less than a minute, but it really didn't get a ton of lift. We saw some, but we didn't see a lot. And then in 2020, Pinterest introduced what they refer to as idea pins. And that was fueled largely by this massive movement of TikTok and Pinterest really wanting to capture this whole short form, less than 15 second, 30 second video, right? And so with that, we see a video more integrated into those slides. It's very much like an Instagram story or just a one 15 second slot. We see it being more incorporated into that as opposed to a standalone video pin. So I think that's a shift that none of us really anticipated. Obviously, the last two years, none of us have anticipated the shift in the world, right? (laughs) So when Pinterest looked at how much TikTok was really booming, they said, okay, how do we integrate idea pin? So now they have this idea pin and now they have what's called a watch tab where you can just continuously scroll like you would reels or TikToks. And now they've added an element called Pinterest TV. That has been something they've really put a lot of effort behind starting in 2022. So the rise of video has been pretty significant, but so far in the data, we're not seeing it translate a video pin standalone be something that really drives a lot of engagement. It's more in those other silos of idea pins. Mm, That's really interesting. So um, as somebody who's been, you know, so involved and built a business around Pinterest, what do you think about this? Do you think the video is going to work or is it going to go a bit like LinkedIn with stories where they're just going to abandon this? What do you, how do you think it's going to pan out? Yeah, I kind of think it's going to, they're going to jump ship on it. And I think it's going to really just fold into the short form because looking at the way the culture is around the world and our attention spans, there's just not that craving for it anymore. It's just not there. So I think these platforms have to adjust and migrate. And for Pinterest too, because the user intent is always to search what they're looking for, find it, and then click away. Mm. Pinterest had a really big burden to keep people on the platform longer to appeal to advertisers because they went public as a public company in 2019. So then all of a sudden you now have shareholders that you're accountable to. So I think all of that combined to say, okay, if we can put video in this short form and we can keep people scrolling, we can keep people on the platform. Now we can monetize those short form videos. We can find creators. And now every platform has a creator monetization program to try 
try to get to create. Right. And so I think that's an interesting, I would say burden for content creators. And what I see is that they're, everybody's burned out. You know, there's a lot of these conversations about repurposing and getting smarter, but each one of these platforms has a different ecosystem and the way in which you interact and Pinterest in itself, they don't respond well to the look at me and look what I'm doing, they respond better to let me guide you and walk you through a project or a step-by-step or this aha moment, which again makes Pinterest this outlier and a little bit different to create content for, which has kind of always been the case with them. So yeah, I think video as a standalone will end up It'll, I think it'll be done by the end of 2022. It'll, it'll fizzle out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I completely agree with you in terms of, um, you know, the content has to be specific for each platform. And, you know, as much as, you know, what we do, we are content repurposing business and teaching people how to repurpose. But our position is always to have that platform focus that we don't just lift and shift content from one platform to another you 100% need to understand why people are there what their intent is what they expect to see and get and and the value that they want and and not just lift and shift and it's funny how you know we've seen a lot of the platforms introduce very similar you know features and I can't always understand whether they think it is because they do just want to have the same content across platforms so let's make it really easily or whether it's just that you know kind of copycat play because it is working and they're still expecting that native content to be created for the platform but it's really interesting to see you know how these things will pan out um in terms of we were just talking about the different content um if we just jump over to advertising so Hmm. actually the the paid um you know sponsored content that you can create on pinterest how does that work for businesses yeah so pinterest ads specifically have really had a lot of iterations over the last couple of years i would say it's it's kind of that same thing where people have to approach it with that long-term mentality whereas if they approach facebook meta or any other ads it's very quick to optimize within a couple of hours. Even you can see if it's doing well, whereas on Pinterest, it takes a couple of weeks. So when we approach ads, we want to be thinking about what is the conversion that we want? We don't generally use Pinterest ads for awareness, unless you're a super big company that can afford that ad spend. But if you're a smaller company making a million or less per year, you're really focused on a conversion to an email, to a sale, to whatever it is that you want them to do. We would never run them specifically for traffic because we can't measure it. So we get Mm -hmm. down to that, then we can get really good targeting and really good placement. But again, it takes that two weeks of optimization and then another two weeks to really see how it's doing and then tweak. So we always tell people when you think of leaning into Pinterest ads specifically, give yourself six months to look at whether or not that's going to be a good investment. People can start Pinterest ads now, even without having invested on Pinterest before in their organic. And that's something that's also shifted. We would have never told people to dive into Pinterest ads if they didn't have a good, solid organic strategy. But now it's easier to jump in. And what's great about Pinterest ads too, is you can run them and people can save them and they they live forever. It's not like you take the ad down and it goes away. They're still living and still have a lasting life lingering impact. So again, that just makes Pinterest this different type of advertising that if you're looking as a business owner into your suite of options, this is one good long-term option. You just need to have the mindset and allocate the right budget for what your intent is over there. Mm. It's really interesting what you just said about the saving aspect, and it does make it really quite different to uh, Google ads, doesn't it? Because um, does it work that you would be advertising, so putting paid spend on your content, so your images, your pins going in front of certain keyword searches? Yep. Is that how it works? But then yep. what, you, what you're basically saying is that somebody really likes your pin that they see um, and they go and save it, which is funny because essentially – you know, in the advertising world, people are saving an ad, which is quite unheard of really, isn't it? You can't imagine people saving an ad on other platforms. (laughs) So, well, and what's interesting to that is as a user of Pinterest myself, as I use it personally, 
I have saved ads before because they have just been so helpful. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, I want to remember this and I want to revisit it. I can't take action on it now, but I don't want to forget it. And I think Mm -hmm. that's also another thing about the platform is people naturally have that habit of gathering all their ideas and they get to save it in a place where they can categorize it. They can organize it. They can have it and they'll continue to revisit things that are so helpful. They'll go back to their Pinterest board. So when it comes to this targeting, yeah, you want to look at what are the keyword searches that people are doing? What are the interest targeting that they have? Because Pinterest has designed the home feed of every person to be what's called a smart feed, to be something that is filled with interests and who you follow and your keyword searches. And so what Pinterest prides itself on is that these ads slip in and Mm. they look native. So the only way, if you're looking at the Pinterest screen on your phone, every single image pretty much looks the same. And it takes an eye, a marketing eye sometimes to see the promoted by that lets you know it's an ad. Whereas, you know, ads on our stories in Instagram or Facebook, they stand out. We know their ads right away, right? Yeah. They, they, they mm-hmm. look different, right? Yeah. But Pinterest has this great way of making it look super native, which is why you get that intent to save because they didn't know it was an ad to begin with. No. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's super smart. Cause as you said, you can, you know, you're in Instagram stories or something like that. And you just spot the ad a mile off, don't we? And I think a lot of us then just. <laughs> yeah, you were like, like, swipe through. Yeah, yes. like swipe, swipe. But yeah, no, that's that, you know, that's super clever way of doing it. And and it, you know, it's it's valuable for everybody then, isn't it? It's helping the advertiser, valuable for the audience. If they're going and saving them, then they're obviously getting it right. So yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a really good thing to consider getting into um, pin, Pinterest advertising if your audience are over there. Um in terms of repurposing content, so I know I, we just briefly talked about not kind of lifting and shifting content from different platforms and having that platform focus. So let's say on um, on Pinterest and you are you have a business and you have a weekly video podcast. Let's say so you're creating okay. core content as a as a video audio and um, video is going out. Perhaps you're doing a blog post and, you know, typical social content on some of the other channels, slicing and dicing videos and creating images and things like that. How would you recommend that you could incorporate Pinterest into that, let's say, weekly flow of repurposing that someone might do for a video podcast? Yeah. So I think the challenge would be the video to make sure it's not something like you and I are talking right now. And it's not like this because people, again, are going to listen with their sound off. So what we do, especially with our podcast, which isn't video, but I'll say number one, we create a Pinterest image that can all be done in Canva with that you know, slick tool that they have to just convert everything to the platform because a Pinterest image is a two to three. And that again is different than everybody everywhere Hmm. else. So with, and when it comes to the images, we're coming from the, the bent of asking a question or peeking their idea. So we would put that over there on Pinterest. And then we would also take and take an idea pin and we would kind of map out the four points that maybe we talked about in the podcast. Now you could incorporate one of those slides into the talking piece. Um, and you could really, in, you can enlighten that it's a podcast, but what we found is that It's really hard to get people to move from an idea pin. Now, I didn't say this earlier. They don't link. So this is the hurdle, right? Like they only go to your profile page on Pinterest. So to get a user to go from a pot from this idea pin where you see the video where it's most prominent into your profile, into your blog, into your podcast, that's a big leap, right? So the better leap that you want to take them through is give them a high point that's a teaser that gets them interested in going to your profile to click on your website. At that point, then it's your burden, obviously, to make your website very searchable, easy to navigate, and to know that you have a podcast, right? So for us, we see it as taking taking the podcast, putting it into this idea pin, of the three steps to clean up your Pinterest account or something like that. And then the call to action at the end being, if you want to learn more, click on our profile and go to our website and search. So we're seeing that common habit of people because they are coming to the front page of a website from all these different sources. So having that search 
very prominent has been helpful. And then we've tested audiograms yeah. and, uh, and those have kind of, they've fallen flat, frankly. So it's going to be more in just a, a static type of image, which actually is a little bit of a relief because I'm not trying to repurpose video for Pinterest in a, in a way it just doesn't always work because people are more astute at just looking at the image. Like they're like, what can the image tell me? I need to quickly categorize what it is and then decide if I'm going to take action or not. That Mm -hmm. happens in less than a second. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would go into repurposing. Now there is this one other way that you could try that we have done is there's there's what we're seeing is this whole thing of people trying to remove like watermarks, right? So we get a lot of things coming from TikTok as video and people are removing watermarks and some of it is getting through with a watermark. Some of it isn't. So what these platforms have done is they've created cross sharing buttons. So on Pinterest, you could have your idea pin and you can share it to an Instagram story. It'll still have the little Pinterest logo on it when you put it on Instagram, but vice versa, Instagram to Pinterest. The greatest thing with that is that all these platforms have their own audio. So if you're adding any audio uh, music or anything like that, you can't download it and then share it. There's all these specifications. So Mm. we will do that as if we create an idea pin and we maybe lack time we will share it to our Instagram stories because then we know our engaged followers over there will still get to see that content. It's not repurposed into a reel, but it is repurposed over there. So that's generally what we do. Do you notice a diminished reach on those Instagram stories when you do that? You know, I've generally noticed a decrease on Instagram stories overall, Yeah, like yeah. And not, you know, so when we have done that, I actually haven't noticed a difference besides that initial decreased reach. Yes. So it tends to be the same. And as I look at it now, it's like, those are the people who are already following me. So they kind of know me and they're, so I'm yeah. kind of serving them with this warm content, if you will. Yeah. When it comes to the reels piece, I will say we're very careful to download the raw video and then upload it directly to a reel without any watermarks or anything like that. Um, but I think good content still, you know, bucks the trend of the algorithm sometimes like if people are going to share it, they're going to share it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's what we've seen overall. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. I, um, I find that uh, you often do get that diminished reach if there is the watermark, which is why all these, you know, there's all these tools that exist that are removing watermarks. But actually, yeah. I find that um, even if you run it through these various tools and you do remove the watermark, you still get diminished reach because it, it, Instagram knows, like they they obviously just have some kind of intelligence that just can see whether there's a watermark or not that was created on TikTok or that was downloaded yes. from TikTok or, or whatever the other platform is, whichever. So, um, but like you said, I think that you don't always have to worry too much about things like that in terms of if it's just a valuable piece of content, you quite, you know, strapped for time or resources, but it would be useful to share it. It's like timely to do it now, then, you know, just, just share it and get it out there. And you can always look at how to optimize it in a different way in the future for more extended reach. Um, yeah. yeah, I was getting something on that line that I think is interesting to point out for those people who dive in is that we're seeing all these creator rewards programs come up and Pinterest has had their own in 2022. They've said, we're going to put $20 million into creator rewards and we want you to create these idea pins. What's fascinating is one of their lines is it must be original content. And so a lot of people have asked that question. Can I repurpose from Instagram? Can I repurpose from TikTok? Do they know? And you just brought up that great point about what it, I think they, all these platforms do, because you see YouTube creator programs, you see TikTok creator programs, like they're not interested in your repurposed content. They want the original you created right here. I I mean, I don't know how they know, but I think you bring up a great point. Like, yeah, they do. I think that my, my completely unqualified like theory (laughs) is that I just think that they, have a way of almost scanning the other side and and they can like yes. like can duplicate you know like you can pick plagiarism up from written content i think like there's a way that they can just 
pick it up as suspected like plagiarism but really it's like they're seeing that this is out there in the wild somewhere where this isn't the first instance of this on the internet I think so yeah um it's something to to like yeah like you said if the, it's saying in these creator um like guidelines original content there's you know there is an issue with that and we're seeing that um in terms of engagement on the platforms so um how interactive should you be on Pinterest in terms of liking, commenting, all the different interaction and engagement that, you know, you would expect an account to to have on a a platform like Pinterest? So it's changed, obviously, over the last couple of years. Um, You know, per uh, back to our 2018, I would have said not important, not a big deal. There's really, it's a hard way to see if people have commented. Really what you're looking for is those signals of saves and clicks, right? Well, now that we've added in this idea pin feature, Pinterest has added a lot of commenting. So they've actually added a notification um, section. It has a little megaphone at the top and you can see people commenting. They're very much encouraging you to comment. So I would highly encourage anybody to check that engagement notification so that you can see if people are commenting to you. Also before I would say it's a lot of spam comments. It's fake. You can see, well, now it's actually authentic comments and people commenting back. Pinterest has said that the more comments and more engagement you get on idea pins, the better those pins will do, which again, we see that with reels and we see that with TikTok. So what I would suggest is that once a week, maybe twice a week, going in and looking and seeing what comments are there, and then even commenting and engaging on a few others that you find valuable and really trying to bridge those authentic connections with people that you want to notice you. But it's not as involved as we see on the other platforms. It's a little bit less just because users are still like, why are you talking to me? Like, (laughs) this is my space. So you have to remember that there's still that hesitancy out there. Yeah. Super interesting though. That's really insightful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of boards, so creating content on Pinterest and building your boards that you are putting your pins onto, um, in terms of repurposing opportunities, I was thinking about this the other day in terms of on Instagram, there's Instagram guides where you can create, yes. you know, these guides and curate, you know, we could do a guide on repurposing videos and curate all of our like, Instagram posts and things like that about creating repurposing videos on Pinterest. Do you see that being a good um, repurposing opportunity as opposed to create these themed boards where you are then able to even just send a potential client to that board like go to this board it's got all our case studies from clients we've worked with that kind of thing does does that work well on the platform Yeah, it works well, mostly in the design space. So if you're a photographer, if you're a branding photographer or a designer or an interior designer, excellent. We highly, highly recommend that because a lot of what you can do, the next layer is sharing a board with your client to get inspiration, to get into their heads, to say, hey, if I'm going to redesign your website, I want you to tell me what colors stand out to you, what brands look good to you, what, what things feel and pin them all here. So you and I can see it. You can name that board, the name of the project or the style or whatever it is and utilize your boards for both showcasing the work, working with clients, and then optimizing for the search because your board names do need to be very specific to what people are searching. So if you are in this branding web design space, you can do a board that's all about tips for finding your brand and you can pin a lot of your content there, but you can also have case studies, examples of clients that we've worked with and then showcase that, share it with people. I've seen a lot of people even do that on Instagram stories to say, if you want to see who we've worked with, here's a link to our Pinterest board. Now, the trick is, is that mobile to mobile integrations with these apps are very clunky sometimes. So oftentimes when someone links on Instagram to a Pinterest board, it goes to the mobile web. It doesn't go straight to my app. So just know that that could be a block for some people. I would recommend putting it in your emails or other places where you know people might engage with it on a computer or even if they are on their their phone, 
I have to look to see, but I believe on the phone, for some reason, when you link an email, it does go to the app, but I have to double check that. So that's just one thing that you might want to think about is um, you want people to get there, but what are the weird tech hurdles that prevent yeah. them from getting there? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good point. Um, another thing I was going to ask you, um, I've got, I've got two, two questions <laughs> to ask final questions. Um, I remember when we spoke last and I was thinking that if you are a content creator and you're creating, let's say, how-to content, something like that, a wonderful repurposing opportunity could be to repurpose that content, that blog post or video or podcast, whatever it is, a pillar piece of content into a infogra- an, an infographic. So then have this engaging infographic, share all that information, and that would be perfect content for Pinterest. But then I remember when we had a conversation, you made this really great point that infographics are, can be can be good and bad because if you provide everything in the infographic then what's the incentive for them to actually go onto your, to your website yeah. do you still do you still feel that that is the case for, for content marketing for businesses it's more about the tease of the content to get them to go over versus just giving everything in this wonderful infographic yes 100 percent. in fact if i if i would take that infographic and break it down into an idea pin And then it also a standard pin. If I was to do that idea pin, I might give the top three or four and then go to my profile and go to the website to learn more. So still having them walk through that. And the infographics are really popular because people could create super long ones and it would take up a bunch of the feed and Pinterest was like, no, 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 no. So now those get cut off anyway, but you're right. They save them for later but they never take action to come to your website to learn more. So it's a little bit of this marketing dance of like, just give enough to answer the question and make people feel like they want to save it or they, they feel connected to you. Like you heard them and you're teaching them, but really just a few tips and then getting them over to the site to learn more. And one of the things too, I tell people, if you're going to invest in Pinterest and it's going to be one of your main channels to drive traffic. And we do still see that with many, many businesses and brands and content creators, that there's still this great traffic driver is having that place on your website where the search is, or to say, did you find us on Pinterest? Especially if you're leaning into idea pins search here to find what you're looking for, because that is a common frustration for pinners right now is they are so used to clicking on something and going to a website that we do see them pretty frustrated with this idea pin feature because they can't quickly get to it. Mm. And so I think that solves the problem that pinners have right now is that you're quickly leading them down a path because Pinterest is, it's kind of put a wrench in their system. I understand why Pinterest did it, but I think some users are leaving the platform because they're frustrated by it. Yeah, that does sound really frustrating, actually. I can understand that's the case, and at least there are you know, some options and workarounds, like you said, but hopefully maybe they'll like kind of make another iteration and a slight change to make things a little bit easier in that regard. So, yeah. yes. Um, I guess with, with, um, with something like creating a, a really great looking infographic, if you do exactly as you said and have more of those idea pins and the the content that is leading to your site on Pinterest, but if you then have that kind of engaging visual content on your website instead, so a tease of the infographic and then the great infographic is over there. If you're putting a lot of time and effort into um, growing a Pinterest audience and, and getting traffic from Pinterest to your website, Would it be fair to say that you probably are building an audience of people who are visual learners and love the visual side of things? So investing in good infographics for your website, knowing that people from Pinterest love visual content would be a good match for website content. Yeah, it definitely would. And I think it's... um... You'd have to do a little bit of a play with what that would look like, because what we're seeing people too, is they just want these bite-sized quick wins. And we're, we're not willing to read as we've noticed, like a long blog posts, like it's like hard to get people to give their name and email these days. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to do it, I would recommend breaking it up so that it looks like people can capture number one 
capture number two, yeah. because I hear over and over from people in my personal life. They're like, oh my gosh, on TikTok, I learned this in 60 seconds. Like we, we have no patience for anything anymore. So thinking of that and thinking that people do still want to learn and they do still want to read through things. How can you lead them kind of through a path that keeps their interest going, which is a tough burden to put on a content creator, but it's just the way that things are going. It's, it's not as easy as it used to be anymore. So taking that long form idea of an infographic of something visual and just breaking it up into small bite-sized pieces. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. That sounds fab. (laughs) So final question. Um, what is your favorite like Pinterest tool or resource to recommend to people who are just getting started with the platform? Mm. You know, I love Canva. I will say if I had to think about how it aligns so well with Pinterest being a visual platform and that billboard advertising, and then design being such a struggle for so many people, using that as a tool to overcome that hurdle and kind of hone your design with a lot of help. I have found for so many people, that is the bridge that helps them continue with Pinterest. Cause I know for me, I struggle with images a lot. Like I'm not a good image creator at all, but I can go into Canva and I can use a template. So I think it's matched with that. You have a lot of people who sell Pinterest templates. We do, and you can put those in there and then just make it quick and easy. And I'm all about efficiency, all about making things work. And I do think Canva, they have idea pin templates now. They have a lot of different options for Pinterest. And so I, I don't know what we would do without it. Truthfully, like if we, you know, using Photoshop or using Illustrator, using all those big programs feels so overwhelming. And for a long time, that's all we had. And you had to hire somebody and you had to pay a lot of money. So I love that Canva reduces the barrier to entry for a lot of that. And there, we use their, um, Canva at work that will convert all the images, you know, for social and that in itself, it's like a magic button. It's like, ah, for me, and I have a second brand and second business and I do some of the images and I just love click the button. There you go. It's done. Magic. (laughs) Magic is right. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I completely agree with you. We absolutely love Canva and I've been using it for um, years. And whenever anyone's ever convinced me to try like a Canva alternative, I've I've only ever tried it for a few minutes and then I've just been like, it's not as good as Canva. (laughs) I know. Massive advocate of it. (laughs) They do have, I'll say they have an integration where you can add Pinterest scheduling to it. Yeah. It is a little bit clunky we found compared to some other ones, but if you're a short on your budget and you really know you need the image um, component and you pay that, I think it's $20 a month for Canva. You can also use the Pinterest scheduling integration if you need to just know that it's a little slower than all the rest. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I think we've dabbled with that, but, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's good if, if you just kind of don't have another scheduling tool or anything like that, it's a good start, yeah. isn't it? So, um, cool. Well, thank you so much. You've had such a, you know, a great conversation, really insightful. And it's so interesting to hear all these developments in the world of, of Pinterest and what content creators can be doing to, um, work, you know, optimize the platform and optimize their content. Um, where would you like, uh, people to go to connect with you, find out more, all of that? Yeah. Well, since they're listening on a podcast, I have a podcast too, the simple pin podcast. So if you want to dive deep into Pinterest marketing or any of that, I have that over there as well. And I think we've been podcasting about the same amount of time. It's about six years for me too. So there's a lot of content there, but start it most recent and work backwards. And then simplepinmedia.com is where we have everything. We have a lot of resources, tools for education, and then you can even hire us for services if you need to. So it's your one-stop shop for all Pinterest marketing needs. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I will put all the links to everything in the show notes so people can go and easily connect with you and subscribe to the podcast and find all your resources and services, et cetera. So that's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, Kate. It's been great. We will not leave it as long next time to invite you back <laughs> on because everything moves so fast. We need to keep on top of it. Of the game. I know, Pinterest, right. So. <laughs> we had a ton to talk about. So thanks, Amy. I yeah, appreciate it. No, thank you. It's been great. 